Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be reviewing a video that was sent to me by someone who was concerned in a Facebook forum where it was dealing with CNC. Um, he was really concerned about the practices that he was seeing done, and after reviewing the video, I have to agree, the practices that you're seeing are incorrect. Um, and again, don't take my word for it. I'm doing this video to hopefully save many of you, uh, mainly because of safety. And I feel that a lot of these videos are overlooked in terms of safety. I am keeping this anonymous. I'm not trying to beat down the influencer who created this on YouTube. I think he had all of the right intentions when he made the video. The unfortunate side is people seem to forget that they're influencing others in what they feel is correct or what they feel got them by. Getting by with electrical when we're dealing with three phase can literally cost you your life. So we need to look at these videos in depth closely. And again, he actually goes and clarifies in the video that he's never done this before. So again, I'm not beating him down, but by the same token, we need to in initiate common sense when we're dealing with three phase output type VFDs and they are extremely dangerous. So again, let's review the video together and we'll cover where things get hairy. As far as uh, the connector you see here, of course, it is a ceramic connector. Many of you are familiar with these. I built hundreds of cables with these connectors. Um, and again, if you're using the incorrect cable, you will be dealing with EMI noise issues. Whether or not they actually uh, are present on your system at one point in time is questionable. Best practice in the actual user's manual even initiates them talking about using uh, shielded cable, double shielded cable. The reason I prefer double shielded is you're hitting both frequencies with uh, EMI, and that's why it's considered bulletproof. When you're doing just single shielding, you're not hitting that. So, again, that's where we're going with this. The other factor is when guys ask me, you know, why are your cables so expensive? What seems to be forgotten is the cost of the cable. Double shielded cable is not cheap. If you go to McMaster Car and look up the prices, you'll find out real quick just how expensive double shielded cable is. It's a specialty cable on top of the labor involved with working with it. I've discussed this many times. But let's start the video. We'll go over it together and hopefully you guys will see my point. And we're going to remove these two little screws holding this um, piece that makes it to where the wires won't be pulled out. Just going to fast forward this now. That we need works, and that's what I'm going to do. Turn this end part, and it will remove like that. Then we have a coupler. One end is threaded, one end is smooth. The threaded side always will go down. I'm going to put it back together, and that's what the inside of this looks like. So now you can see we have four connector pieces like that. So our wires will sit inside, and then we'll put some solder in them. I've never done this, so I'm going to show you how I did it. It's probably going to be a terrible solder job because I'm not very good. Now, once again, the end user already said he's never done it. It's probably going to be a terrible solder job. Um, a terrible solder job does not mean just cosmetically. We're not looking at a cosmetic failure or something to appeal to the people on the Internet. What we're dealing with is a connection that can be literally hazardous to your health in the sense that it can kill you. How? If a lead jumps from one terminal to another due to heat because we don't have proper penetration on our solder on our connection of a joint, you're screwed in the sense that you will arc and start a fire with three phase. Okay, it's very, very prominent. The other factor is, is that in the beginning of this video and something that really bothered me the most was he had his son around this machine that he's working with. This I see all too often online. And when I see incorrect practices where things are just being done in a term half-assed because we're trying to get it done, that does aggravate me. Because anybody who understands electrical and understands it at a level that of how dangerous it can be, especially three-phase, you really want to be careful. So once again, when he talks about applying solder, I want to clarify, soldering these joints requires flux to be correct. 
so we actually remove any potential oxidation on these terminals and this way we get the, the solder itself to flow correctly and what you'll see is it does not because of course he does not use flux but if it works it works and that's see if it works it works well unfortunately that's not the case with electrical where again over time god forbid that lead jumps and it could be potentially fatal what i'm going to do i am also going to use some uh, heat shrink you can see it's i only have this one just happens to be in the shop but i want to isolate each wire um like this so they won't touch each other so what i'll do is i'll cut some off wrap these around twist these ends I'll cut some off, we're going to slide it up in there to where the wire is, and then when I get it soldered, I'll push it down, and then uh, I'll heat shrink it. So, let me cut these, cut this into thirds, I'm going to put about one right there, one, we'll just go about halfway, so we'll go like that. As I'm looking at the ends of this, we really only want enough copper wire to go in there, like so. Um, I think my copper wire is a little too long, so I'm just going to take this and snip. Now guys, just a quick point. He's snipping these in bare copper format. In the best practice, you would tin these first, then snip them, because what you're doing when you actually cut them like that is you're disturbing all your conductors. So if you tin them first, they're all joined together with, with, again, flux, you'll find that your conductors will be all joined, welded together, and therefore when you do a clean cut with your actual uh, flush cutters, you'll have a nice terminal that will be ready to be inserted. This sounds picky. Believe me, over the time doing this, certain cables you'll get conductors that'll be frayed. You'll have all kinds of issues with this, so just be careful with that. So I don't have as much exposed wire going into it. So I'll snip it about there. You can see it's pretty short. So now we'll shove on our heat shrink like that. And our wires are going to be like so. I think I need to cut this back just a little bit so my heat shrink will fit up out of the way. So I just use a knife. One other point. I think many of you can already see this is standard 16 gauge cable you can see it right here this is not shielded it is not double shielded so we already know he's doing all this work and it's been mitigated by the fact that the the actual um, induction of EMI into the system is inevitable this is also stated in the HY users manual okay so you guys can review it yourself um, this is stuff I've covered in previous videos uh, luckily, this individual, from what I've read in his comments, never had any issues, he claims, in a couple months with EMI. So that's great. But the safety issue is still present in terms of how it's being wired. And I just scar around the outsides of this. I don't want to cut all the way through. And then I'll bend, and it kind of splits it. I didn't quite go all the way through enough on all this. You can split it right there. I just want the outside part to be cut through. The back, like that. All right. Now we got ourselves a little bit more playroom with the heat shrink get that away from the actual solder tip for each one of these. So I got that heat shrink and I have one more. Here it is. There is the other one. All right. So there's our heat shrink. Here's our end. So we're going into one, two, and three, and they are labeled focus. Hopefully you can see it's labeled one, two, three, and four. We're just gonna use one, two, and three. If you have four, that'll be your ground. I don't have a ground. Here's my solder. Okay, guys, everybody has a ground. 
Um, just to clarify, pin 4 on that actual connector is a ground. It's utilized for ground. On the spindle itself, it may not have pin 4 connected to the actual body. I've covered this in previous videos. The reason that is, is because overseas they typically expect the end user to ground the chassis, which is metal. They're assuming it's metal, as it should be. And then the Z-axis should be conductive because it's metal, as well as the spindle body grounding everything, including the spindle actual uh, itself, when you actually ground the chassis. Now, you have another option, which would be to ground the actual spindle itself by connecting pin 4 on the spindle's cap, where the actual connector is, to the spindle internally. And I've got an actual uh, image for that, and I will gladly send it to anybody, but grounding the spindle is essential as well as grounding your CNC chassis. This is not only for EMI mitigation, but it's also for safety. Okay, it's absolutely a must, especially once again with three phase. I have my soldering gun right here. I have a weller. Don't buy the cheap one, buy a uh, better one. It gets much hotter and you can control the heat right here. So this has been heating up. So I'm gonna pull it out of the way. I'm gonna put the green inside the one. Gonna lay it down. This may be hard for you to see because I don't have the ability. Now we can discuss the obvious here as well because I know many of you are out there going, Vin, when are you going to talk about it? He's using three gate or three lead cable. So again, it should be done with 16.4 once again attaching that ground to the actual connector. Now, do you have to do that? Once again, it's best practice to use all terminals on the connector for that reason. If you don't do it, that's up to you. But again, I highly recommend the 16.4. And once again, he is incorrectly placing the green lead, which we all know green or should know, green is, is always a ground. Okay, now he, that's his personal cable. He wants to build it like that. Under best practice, green is always allocated to ground. Okay. Now, the thing I'm going to point out real quick is, God forbid, let's say, this cable starts a fire and the fire marshal does an investigation in his home or business or wherever he sets this equipment up. If they open that cable up or determine that that cable caused the fire and see that the cable's assembled incorrectly, his insurance will not pay. Okay? His insurance will not pay. So, if you don't believe me, look into it. Call your insurance companies and find out. This video is, like I said, it's certainly not to beat anybody down, but when we see incorrect things being done at a level of human hazard to where, again, we're not paying attention to what we need to to make sure that everybody's safe, including not just himself. If he doesn't care about his own life, that's one thing, but he also had his son in the video. So that's where I, you know, I draw a line personally for that. So again, please... Keep that in mind and check what I'm saying. Like I said, I'm a voice online. What do I know? Check. To move it. To where you can see so well. Right now I'm just trying to get it to where it'll stay in one place. And stop rolling in this piece. Make it to where it'll stop. Connection point. Okay. He just soldered this. He actually, I'm just cutting the screen, so naturally I don't disclose anything about this individual. He just soldered it, of course. In two seconds, he made contact with the soldering iron to it and feels that his joint is now viable. He, of course, did not use flux. Guys, please, we need to be very, very careful with what we're dealing with. Hopefully, I'll have the rest on here that you'll see. Point. It is nearly impossible for you to see what I am doing. Once again, heating up the terminal the way he's doing that, and I see this done on YouTube all the time, and I say test both methods. I see it done that way, and what's happening when you heat that terminal is everything that's connected to that terminal is being heated, including the casing. Over time, you're going to melt the casing. 
Okay, I've seen it done in numerous YouTube videos. The easiest way to do this is if he would have tinned the leads, which he never did. And then, of course, using Flux, he would have then just naturally used the Flux on the lead prior when it's in the terminal and then applied solder to the tip using, like I said, the carryover method, which guys will sit there and say, you know, numerous things about it. But I'm telling you right now, when it's done correctly, you are not transferring heat the way you are right now. He's transferring all this heat to this conductor right here, and he's not applying flux, so he's just heating and heating and heating unnecessarily because the solder is not grabbing because, of course, the internal flux inside the solder is not enough to actually clean the parts of oxidation and then formulate a proper bond. Which is probably you can see it done live. Terrible. Let's look how long he, he holds solder. this. There you go. Keeps holding it. Keeps holding it. Anybody who used flux would have said this connection would have been done at least two seconds because it would have been properly cleaned. Look at this. All right. Check out that solder joint. Okay, let's go back. Let's watch this again. I'm going to pause it for you. You can look at the solder joint. All right. Check out that solder joint. That is an incorrect joint. It is not filled. It is not leveled. The solder has not flowed. He feels that's done because he has contact. That is not a proper weld. If this heats up, to the solder's uh, actual melting point, which is very possible over time, maybe not right away, but over time, it can lose the bond, jump the lead, and when I say jump the lead, jump the terminal where it is positioned. If it arcs, you're screwed. And then, of course, I know he's using heat shrink. If it comes out, pulls out of the cable, you can have all kinds of problems. I'm, I'm really grateful he is using heat shrink, but this is not a correct solder connection. So please be very careful. As far as talking about the conductors, what I said about cutting them, you notice he's got conductors here that are out of place, namely this one. It wasn't cut. And the reason it wasn't cut is, like I stated, uh, when you're using the flush cutters and you're not using flux, you can see what you're left with. You're left with uneven conductors. This is not level, and you will be fighting your work. In electrical and electronics, one thing you'll notice is everything wants to fight you unless you're organized and unless you have a process. Please, guys, be careful. And that's all I'm, I'm doing this video for, is I want you to be careful. That's what it looks like for that one. So, oh, my heat shrink got shrank, which is a... Once again, he, didn't, he forgot to push his heat shrink back. So as he was heating the terminal, as I stated, he cooked it so much that the actual shrink got hot enough to melt. That should tell you how long a duration he left the soldering iron on there. And that's, once again, just inexperience. Okay, there's better methods to use. I, I still don't know why he hasn't tinned these leads, but there you go, that's another issue you just encountered. Unfortunate, <laughs> I didn't keep that away. So we're gonna cut that in and push the heat shrink down a little bit more. Uh, oh well. I still have enough to push it down over that joint and then the heat will wrap that up and we won't see it. So there's my connection one. Now I'm going to do white to connection two. Or actually I'm going to do black because that's just kind of where the wires are pointing. Now that I totally agree with when he says that that's where the wires are pointing. What he really means is how they're coming, the conductors are coming out of the cable in the positioning. Like I said, electrical will always want to fight you. The main thing you have in orientation always is the green lead to be isolated to ground. Everything else is arbitrary. So if anybody ever services the cable, they can look and see, okay, green is ground. Okay, that's the way it should be done. 
And again, that's the reasoning behind it. But mainly, mainly, it's like I said, in the event that there is ever an issue, God forbid, and this individual has a problem with the machine, someone gets hurt, a fire is started, anytime there's an insurance claim, they're going to do an investigation. If the investigation is done, things are not done properly, you are going to find you are in trouble. So please pay attention to these details. So we'll get some heat shrink again. I'm going to cut this in half because it's too, the heat shrink is really long. And it's just going to heat up. And there's two. And I'll flip it around this way. Put the wire inside like that. I'm trying to get it to where it'll film. But it is not easy to hold heat. And he's absolutely right. It's not easy to hold the connector when you're laying it on a desk and you're not having it in a jig, so to speak. That's why I prefer a rubber joint vise because this connector, once again, can be mounted in the vise. You've seen it in my previous videos. And this will, of course, ensure that you're not fighting everything. Once again, not only is he fighting the fact that he's not soldering properly utilizing flux on a three-phase connector, but he's also fighting the fact that he's hoping his terminal doesn't come out of the soldering cup, which we don't know what kind of bond he's jo joining anyways because the rosin flux, once again, it's not doing its job properly in terms of being uh, oxidation being removed on the terminal. Uh, many of you have looked at surface mount soldering. Anybody doing rework on laptops and whatnot, you can also confirm all of that rework is done using flux for that reason. We want proper flow, we want a clean connection, and we want a perfect bond. Now take into account that a laptop, for instance, you're dealing with very low voltage in DC format. This is a three-phase AC connector not using flux. We're talking catastrophic potential failure. Put the wire on, so it's just kind of, it's going to be what it is. Yeah. There you go. All right. Here's connection two. Just make sure it doesn't pull out. We're good. The heat shrink didn't get shrank, which is a positive. So then we'll put heat shrink on this one. And that is going to connect, oh, that's connection three. Second connection, but I went to pin three, and then this one is going to come over and go to pin two on this side. Now, something else I want to point out. I want to see if he moves this over. Let's just look. Like that. Okay. You can see this lead is way too long. And this lead is potentially too long. And what happens if you have too long a lead? See this bend right here? When you go to apply your connector and you insert it inside the housing, we want to make sure that there's no friction on this actual conductor. And the main reason we do want to make sure there's no friction is the fact that over time, with heat combined with friction, it could wear down the insulator. So, again make sure these leads are cut to an appropriate length. If they're too long, and there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of um, excess play, so to speak, in the cable itself, that's fine. But if they're too long, and this looks really, really long right here, you're at risk of potentially making contact with the outside casing. And once again, knowing how he soldered these, God only knows if that connection is going to hold over time. Okay, what works today doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work tomorrow. So what I'm talking about here is just utilizing as much caution as possible because, again, it's always better to be safe than sorry. And in something like this with a three-phase connector, like I said, watching this video, I cringed the first time, and that's why I'm highlighting this. And then heat it up again and put some solder in it. Once again, he's cooking the terminal. My three points are soldered. Once again, anybody who knows, I mean, even if you're a novice with soldering, that is not a proper weld. Okay, once again, like I said, you can see the bend here, how sharp it is. This is a very scary connection. 
And again, guys, I cannot emphasize enough. Um, I'm glad that this individual got his machine running, and I know he's excited, and I get that. But when safety is ignored, then I'm sorry, I cannot forgive anything. I mean, even if you look at his heat shrink here, it's not even cut level. I mean, so I know that sounds picky, but again, we are dealing with a three-phase connection. This is serious, serious stuff. And if you don't have the proper tools, if you don't have the understanding of what you're doing, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to wait, save, do whatever it takes, especially when you have children involved, especially when it's a father-son project. You know your son or your daughter is going to be around the machine. I cannot emphasize enough. I think it's just part of being you know, responsible in a sense that I wouldn't put myself in harm's way. Why would I put someone else in harm's way? Okay. Anybody can see this connector and see that there's issues. So I'm glad that he got his machine running, but please do not follow what you've seen in this video. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth. This is dangerous, and I hope this connector lasts. That's the main thing. So again, and I will reinstate this again for all the people out there who get pissed off because someone's doing a video highlighting what should not be done. Whether you want to do it or not, that's totally up to you. But this is not best practice. This would seriously cause serious issues if, again, this cable fails and it, they actually do an investigation, find out it's due to the cable. It's obvious there's some issues here. So please take that into account. Again, if you guys have any questions about your spindle cable or how to connect it, I can direct you to my videos. Again, my email direct is storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also contact me through my eBay store. Um, I want you guys to make sure that you're safe most of all. Safety comes before everything, before money and anything else. Please do it right the first time. It'll definitely save you in the long run. Thank you all for your support. Take care.